Hi, everyone. Thank you, Yule, for introduction. So uh, yes, today we'll talk about a lot of things. So uh, let's talk about the workflows and MLOps process for batch scoring uh, with uh, and how we can use DVC MLflow and Air, Airflow for these purposes. So hopefully for the next uh, research and uh, demo projects, we'll try to use Dexter as well. Okay, let's start with uh, what kind of batch scoring application uh, in ML <clears throat> we can find and then uh, continue. So how to how we can apply the other tools uh, to such kind of applications. Okay, uh, imagine that uh, we need to build a model that will predict the customer churn. So for business uh, case, we want to reduce costs when the customer left our company. And we want to predict uh, such kind of events in advance of one or three months, for example. For, for such kinds of uh, projects, usually we have a lot of data related to customer profiles, transaction that profiles um, made in our company. So uh, usually it's a lot of data sources and a long history of data. So it's a huge data. And uh, to process uh, such kind of data and train model and to do monitoring, we use batch processes. It means that we run, for example, training for all our data for all our clients at once. And this process can take a few hours, for example, to process all data and uh, generate final scores for all our clients. Uh, and in these cases, usually uh, companies use some big data and distributed computing technologies like Hadoop, Spark, uh, et cetera. And for some companies like banking, so such environment usually is very really closed from uh, outside world. Like, uh, for example, they don't have access to internet and they cannot use uh, some cloud providers like Amazon, Google, et cetera. And they do all of this stuff locally. Uh, another example of batch scoring and batch processes are related to probability of default prediction, probability of, or propensity to buy next product. And so it's quite common task for banking, fintech, and telecom companies. So. What uh, companies want uh, from their business perspective? Uh, they want fast prototyping, fast time to market, and uh, increase the buzz factor to make the team uh, of data scientists in the projects reliable and uh, but, uh, or easy to maintain and develop when uh, something changed in the data science team. So and how we can solve this? We can make uh, reusable code, uh, some uh, separate models or pipelines. We uh, should make reproducible experiments or so keep the reproducible as much as possible. And also we can move out to automation of uh, the pipelines, make our machine learning experiments faster and keep all metrics and artifacts that we uh, got from the, uh, our experiments, keep uh, secured, versioned, and available to analyze and use them in production. And of course, we want to automate the MLOps uh, process to make the process uh, from experimenting and developing into the production as fast as possible, as easier as possible. So uh, usually this kind of uh, solution works for uh, 80 or 90 percent of ML projects. So it's it works well in batch scoring. So the project like we uh, talked before, it works for computer vision and NLP task and a lot of other applications in machine learning actually. So let's uh, talk about the automation. So how we can automate machine learning experiments with DVC and how DVC can uh, help the, uh, us to do this. Uh, let's. Uh, consider our machine learning experiment pipeline as a few steps 
of uh, computation, data processing, and final training and evaluation our model. So it's just a few stages. And at the end of each stage, we have some kind of artifacts or some results we store on, in uh, databases or so in store as a uh, file to the, uh, our file system, et cetera. How we can automate it? Uh, first of all, we need to move our code from Jupyter Notebook to Python.py models and uh, create some configuration files that will configure how all this pipeline will work. Uh, so it means that we should, we should not use some hard-coded uh, parameters in our code, but uh, use uh, some single point of configuration to do this. And only after that, we can move to automating uh, uh, our machine learning experiments. Uh, with DVC and do other stuff like versioning and code testing. So let's start with some simple steps. To move uh, some portion of the code into their uh, Python models is quite easy task. And it's just copy paste. And then it's copied from Jupyter notebook as the first place uh, people start with uh, prototyping and then just uh, move it into the SumPy model and import in Jupyter notebooks. So it's easier, it uh, makes your Jupyter notebooks uh, cleaner and lighter and everything works fine. And also this allows you to start with uh, versioning your code. So use Git to control versions of your code and store, for example, this code in some uh, version control services like uh, GitLab, GitHub, etc. If you're really interested in this uh, topic, we'll talk about this in details in my tutorial in Sunday. Please check that program. Um, to, uh, when we start with uh, moving our code into some pipelines models, we come up with some uh, structured uh, repository for our projects. It may look like this. Uh, it's, uh, usually there are some uh, folders where we store our uh, Python files, scripts in Python, and a uh, few other uh, folders to keep our conf configuration files, docker images, etc. And of course, readme for documentation. Uh, it can be different. Uh, you may follow uh, any other approach for structuring your project like uh, cookie cutter data science or something else. It doesn't matter. Actually, the idea is that uh, such kind of structure is quite uh, handy to have in your projects and uh, follow the, the same structure from one, pro one project to another. Uh, and in this kind of structure and in this approach, uh, usually I also have the notebooks folder in this repo, but it's I keep it uh, empty and uh, I don't... Um, version, the Jupyter Notebooks in Git repositories, and only store these Jupyter Notebooks as uh, in, in my local environment where I run the code. So uh, let's continue. We start with uh, moving some of our code into Python uh, modules. So let's uh, do something with configuration. Let's take the parameters from our Jupyter notebook or code and move it into one single file. For example, it's a params.yaml file. So YAML is a quite good uh, option for this task. Uh, in YAML, for example, the path to the data we want to save our features may look like this. So it's some uh, hierarchy or nested uh, section of parameters, and we can read these parameters and use them in our uh, code models, for example, in the data load uh, by module. And so it's not difficult and uh, it allows you to really, uh, so it's much easier to uh, navigate through all parameters, all configuration of your machine learning pipelines and uh, manage so manage your experiments. So you just may change one parameter in a params YAML file, a few of them for hyperparameters for model uh, hyperparameters tuning, and just rerun your pipelines. And everything kept in this file and also versioned with Git. Okay, uh, shall we actually create pipelines? So for example, we can have all our code 
uh, in uh, different cells in Jupyter notebooks, uh, where we import our functions uh, from these uh, Python models and run it. It's okay, but uh, to make it more uh, flexible and uh, to be able later run these uh, experiments or some separate steps in uh, some automated environment like uh, using DVC, Airflow, Dexter, whatever, it's better to uh, prepare uh, pipelines for each stage. What does it mean? It means, for example, that we have some data load by uh, model that we can run uh, as a single step. Uh, for this step, for data load, we can provide some parameters from our paramcml file. And as an output, we'll have some data that's uh, loaded from the sources and made processed for our models. So and, uh, usually I keep such kind of models in the SRC folder, uh, the SRC slash uh, pipelines or stages. Uh, so these folders may keep uh, all uh, these pipelines we need to run our experiments. And if you will look inside such a uh, file, for example, like uh, data, data load.py uh, stage, it will look like this. We have uh, a separate function that actually do all the work for loading the data. It uh, takes the uh, path to our config or uh, config in a uh, as a dictionary and uh, do some stuff with, with uh, loading, processing data. And after that, it's save uh, some artifacts at the end. And also uh, these files, uh, this file, this model uh, has such kind of structure, if name uh, equal the main. So uh, then this uh, model will execute these lines of code. It means, so actually this is a common way uh, in Python, we can uh, run uh, the this data load model in from the command line interface. And uh, as the parameters for this um, model, when we run it, uh, we'll need to pass the, uh, passed to our paramcml file, so is a config. Uh, and after that, in our command line interface, we can just run Python minus M, the pass to our pipeline we want to run, and pass the, our config, uh, so our par paramcml file. And that's it. So uh, this command will run the data load and will find the process data in the, uh, in the uh, in that place where that we specified in our paramcml file. So it's easier and uh, this also can, so this actually, this uh, approach just uh, extend uh, the ways we can run the code for our machine learning experiments and we can still use Jupyter Notebook to for debugging or even for running such kind of commands. Okay, let's move uh, the next. Uh, how we can actually uh, automate uh, the running end-to-end -end pipeline where we have few stages. Like we have the data loading, we have some, we need some stages for training, etc. And uh, for this, uh, I, I like to use the DVC. Uh, DVC can help us to create the whole pipeline for our machine learning experiments. Uh, we can add uh, the stage, stage by stage to this pipeline. And actually DVC, uh, the idea and the DVC help us to link the code we need to run, the data we need to use to run this uh, stage and the configuration. And uh, under the hood, DVC use Git as the uh, technology to uh, keep versioning uh, of the code and metadata about all this uh, configuration for our pipelines. So if we'll look on the common pipeline for machine learning experiments, they look like this. So we need to load some data, then split and prepare data for training and testing, then run train, run evaluation, etc. And only after that, we can uh, use our models to predict uh, some 
I don't know, some scores. So for batch scoring, we'll use it to predict uh, this, uh, scores or uh, inference the prediction. So for a customer who want to churn from our company. Okay, and for such kind of for the pipelines, DVC will build the DAC uh, as the uh, few steps or uh, with different stages that are linked together uh, with uh, some dependencies and outputs. So to configure uh, such kind of pipeline, we can use uh, we can use uh, DVC command line interface commands, or just uh, use uh, some specific dvc.yaml file uh, format to specify the uh, configure each stages. For example, for data load stage, we'll need to provide the name of the stage, it's data load, of course. Uh, the command we want to run or DVC should run. So actually, this is the same line of command we uh, had had before when we uh, just build this data load uh, model. And then we need to provide some dependencies. Is the dependencies are uh, code files that we use to run this command, as well as some artifacts or data that we need to track uh, and to use uh, in for, for this stage. Uh, also, we may provide the parameters from our paramcml file as a section or as a separate parameters that uh, will be used in data load model. And of course, the outputs. So outputs are some files. Uh, we uh, I call it artifacts. It's uh, it can be data files. It can be some images with plots, or uh, it can be the model, of course. So all of them are outputs. And using this structure, it, so it's quite a simple structure that can define what what is the uh, stage in our experiment, and we can uh, provide such kind of configuration for every step in our pipelines, and uh, so. It, it can be actually the, quite huge, this uh, configuration, but uh, we only need to do this uh, once. And then uh, DVC will understand how to align all these stages in the uh, DAC uh, to, and uh, we'll check the dependencies between all the stages to decide which stage we should actually rerun or we just can uh, take the previous results and don't spend uh, resources and time to for uh, to rerun some stages of our experiments so and after we uh, specify all our pipelines is uh, the, our experiments running our experiments actually is uh, as easy as uh, running one command in a common line uh, interface in our terminal is DVC repro. So DVC repro will rerun all pipeline. It will check all uh, outputs and dependencies for all stages and uh, keep uh, version tile models and other articles. So uh, the idea actually under the uh, DVC data version control is, uh, is some analogy uh, to be a git for data and keep versioning uh, versions of your for your data and models <clears throat> uh, and uh, when you use dvc to build uh, pipelines it, you uh, have uh, this functionality as a bonus and uh, you can uh, manage the versions of data and artifacts and uh, this is a, another uh, topic it's separate will will not uh, put much time on this but uh, as a result, so when we uh, automate all our machine learning experience pipeline with DVC, we get version for versioning for our models, and we can uh, keep the new models, for example, in uh, DVC storage, some remote storage in our server or in the cloud, and then, for example, at the step where we need to get this model back, for example, at the deployment step we can just uh, pull uh, this model from that storage and uh, uh, start to use it. 
Okay, uh, this is about uh, the pipelines automation for experiments. So let's talk about how we can uh, manage experiments and actually what do we need to do this. Uh, because we run the experiments uh, many times uh, during the projects, we need to create and somehow organize experiments to uh, make it easier to understand that these experiments, for example, is about logistic regression models and that one for some deep learning uh, models. So we need to track uh, metrics, be able to search over them and compare them and prepare some kind of dashboards that will show us that uh, this experiment is good one and this may be not good one. So for this purpose, the, the, there are a lot of options, of course, uh, for now, but MLflow, probably the first one, and they're, they're quite simple, that uh, can be used with uh, automated pipelines, as uh, we discussed before, or with just uh, JPython notebooks, uh, if you like. So you just need to import some MLflow uh, functions and use them to lock metrics and params as a key in key, key value, uh, uh, as key value pair. And also you can uh, keep some artifacts with uh, ML for MLflow to track for your experiments. And it's very uh, good. It very good works with uh, some uh, plots. So you just uh, save uh, your PNG or JPEG files as an artifact, and you will be able to see them in the MLflow UI after that. So uh, in MLflow UI, you can navigate and organize your experiments uh, in the way you want and be able to compare some kind of parameters and metrics you track during your experiments. So it's quite a simple and uh, easy to start with solution uh, and open source. So, and let's uh, discuss how we can use both these tools, TVC and MLflow together. Okay, let's uh, start with a, some uh, simple uh, or even the, some simple state of our repository. So we just uh, create the one master branch in our repository and uh, start uh, do, do our first experiment. Experiment one with a simple baseline model uh, with a log rec <clears throat> algorithm. And for example, we have, at the end, we have uh, metric F1 as uh, 0 0.4. So uh, to keep state of this experiment, so uh, during these experiments, when our pipelines will run, we'll, it will lock all metrics and parameters into the MLflow, and we'll find them in UI. Uh, and also because we change some uh, parameters in our params.yaml file, or we may change some uh, code, we need to uh, keep this state of our code and artifacts. Uh, and we can do this with a git, uh, uh, git commit and git push commands and to keep the state of our uh, data and artifacts we can use dvc so with one command like dvc repro we just run uh, new experiments and got these uh, metrics and models and with uh, dvc push we keep the, uh, the the version of our artifacts to the dvc storage we can continue to experimenting for example do to do some, I don't know, uh, hyperparameters tuning, they got better score. And only after that, we may uh, keep the uh, safe, safe our code and uh, uh, data artifacts. And after that, we just merge this branch, experiment one, into the master branch. After we merge it, we add some uh, tag. We actually, it's not necessary, but we, uh, may add some tag that describe that this actually this commit in our master branch is the uh, experiment commit and uh, you can navigate uh, using this tag to find what actually code we used or, or somehow use this version of our experiments. We can continue to do more experiments with different models and uh, do 
few more mergers into the master branch. So trying to continually improve our models and uh, also use this combination with uh, committing our code changes with Git and committing the changes of uh, DVC, uh, our artifacts and models with DVC. And uh, finally, we'll have a uh, few experiments in our UI and we have a few artifacts stored in our DVC storage some, somewhere. And uh, the question is how to uh, keep link the data between uh, MLflow and DVC. And the simplest solution is uh, using uh, some special tags for in uh, uh, GitHub. So we can not just add a simple exp1 tag, but we can uh, combine the tag and codify uh, the, the in, inside this tag some you useful information like for example prefix exp can define that this tag actually is about is an experiment tag we can name the cat boost or add mlflow run id to find the um, actual uh, uh record uh with uh tracking metrics and parameters inside the mlflow and uh to because we um, keep this stack in the Git, so we can uh, even write some script that can automatically extract this kind of uh, tags, uh, process them, find uh, required information in MLflow and extract it from the MLflow database, for example. And we can do the same with uh, MLflow. MLflow has API that allows you to uh, keep additional uh, information as or tags into MLflow records to, for every run. And we can uh, keep this uh, run, a, this tag or, I don't know, git commit hashes, whatever, uh, into the uh, MLflow and uh, to make it easier to navigate also that, for example, to find that this run this record in MLflow was actually created with uh, this version of code. So what are benefits? Uh, we have automated pipelines and uh, artifacts and model version control. All our metrics tracked uh, with MLflow and we can find them at any uh, time, search and compare experiments between uh, each other and to find the be be better or best combination of parameters and data. And also we can uh, synchronize our code and uh, artifacts versions and uh, metrics in MLflow. So uh, this seems not really difficult and it actually worked. So now let's uh, move into the production run is Airflow. Uh, so for example, we have <clears throat> training, uh, we, we've done with some training. Yeah, right. So we use DVC to keep artifacts and MFO to track, track to tr for metrics tracking and uh, to automate. So uh, we need to use these models and use these pipelines to uh, automate scoring, to get prediction for our clients, for example. So, and for this purpose, we can, uh, first of all, add a new scoring stage or model for scoring and run this scoring stage with Airflow. Uh, for scoring, we actually need to uh, retrieve uh, some artifacts like models or some uh, transformers from DVC storage. We need to uh, run actual scoring and after that keep the uh, results of the scoring in some scoring data storage. Uh, and that's it. So it's very easy to do this in Python as a sim uh, separate uh, pipeline and then just wrap it in Airflow. Uh, it's, uh, we don't have time to dip into the airflow too much, uh, and, but uh, sometimes it's easy. It uh, actually, uh, uh, a lot of company use it. And in uh, airflow doc, we also uh, describe in Python, uh, so how we can proceed a few tasks and how we need to run some stage. So for such uh, tasks like uh, run scoring actually is a, very short duck and it's uh, not difficult to write. Uh, so we wrap our scoring uh, 
the pipeline into the uh, ducts, airflow duct, and uh, can keep it in the same repository in a separate ducts folder. And uh, actually in airflow uh, to be able to retrieve the uh, some artifacts from the DVC storage, we need to clone the Git repo first and then uh, actually run this pipeline for scoring and then save results. After that, we can clean the directory to keep it uh, uh, clean. <laughs> uh, for running scoring, usually we need uh, some additional uh, parameters like uh, the run date to be able to extract or uh, score not all database, but for, for example, for some specific uh, interval of for the last months. Uh, when we wrap this uh, scoring or pre create this uh, Airflow duck, we can uh, run it through your Airflow UI or command line interface with Airflow. And uh, during the running this UI, we can track uh, what kind of tasks actually uh, was successful or, or what um, task failed, for example, and uh, look into the logs and find the problem. So uh, the, the next question we should to solve is how to deliver this uh, scoring duck into the airflow where it actually will be uh, run. And the airflow worker can be uh, situated on some another server or in cloud maybe. And for this, we can uh, set up CI CD pipeline, uh, for example, like using GitLab functionality or some other. So and so this is also the different story, uh, but it's not actually that difficult, of course, uh, sometimes. And uh, finally, we'll have such kind of situation and the workflow. When we have the uh, updated our code, for example, changes in our config file, our params YAML, we do git commit and merge code uh, into the, our code base in our repository. So this starts uh, the CI pipeline, and one of these uh, steps in CI pipeline can be the train, actually. And uh, the train will take this uh, code and configuration, run training, and go to uh, the new models uh, as output, store this model into the uh, model and artifact storage, and uh, create pull request to that uh, helps you to decide, do you really need to uh, merge, this, merge this model into the master and use it in production or not? If you agree with this and you like the results, so you can uh, you accept this pull request and this event will run continuous delivery uh, stage. And actually this, uh, at this stage, we just copy the duck, uh, duck uh, module or scoring duck from our uh, duck fo ducks folder to uh, airflow where uh, airflow can just run it and and that's it and uh, to we can put all these technologies into the uh, this diagram where all, all these technologies will be used uh, in this workflow